Hi everyone, today you're going to be learning a little bit about the human immune system. As you get going today, we're going to be looking at objectives number 9 and 12, looking at non-specific immune responses. We'll look at specific immune responses tomorrow. And you're going to look at allergies and how your allergies can relate to the human immune system. Our immune system is there in order to help protect us against pathogens. Pathogens are anything that can cause harm to your body. We've got viruses that can cause harm to our body as well as different kinds of bacteria. We basically have three lines of defense. The first line of defense is going to be a physical barrier. This is not specific to any kind of pathogen. It's basically there to help protect your your body against any kind of thing that could potentially enter your cells. The second line of defense is a whole body response. Again, it's a non-specific, so it doesn't matter what the pathogen is, your body is just gonna try to protect itself against that pathogen. Um, and then tomorrow we'll learn more about the specific uh, immune response. So for this, we're gonna look at um, kind of an analogy. An analogy is comparing two unrelated things. So we're going to think of our body and our immune system as a castle. And we need to protect the inside of our body just like a castle protects the people inside of the castle. So our first line of defense would be our physical barriers. Again, this is a non-specific type of immune response or an, uh, immunity. Um, our skin is our biggest organ. We have uh, skin that covers the external part of our entire body. Um, and so that's going to be our biggest defense mechanism. Um, however, we have holes in our skin. Thinking about your face, you've got eyes and uh, nose and mouth and ears. Um, and so any of those um, holes in your face, basically, you're going to have covered with mucous membranes. Your tears are going to help to keep out infections um, or potential pathogens that could enter your body. Your stomach acid, if you ingest something, should help to kill off any of those small microbes. Um, and so this. First line of defense is really similar to uh, like a castle's moat. Again, if we're thinking about that analogy, the physical barrier between any kind of intruder to a castle, we've got a moat that those intruders would have to cross uh, as well as the tall castle walls. And sometimes that first line of defense gets broken. If you fall off your bicycle, you've got a scratch, uh, you get a pin poke on your finger. Um, sometimes, these pathogens can get into our body. And so we have a second line of defense ready to help fight off the infection if it does cross through that first line of defense, that first barrier. So a couple of these second lines of defenses, again, they're whole body responses, but it's not specific to any type of pathogen. So I can't really differentiate between um, the different kinds of cold viruses or influenza or anything like that. It's just any kind of potentially harmful um, thing that enters your body is going to be fought off by our second line of defense. Uh, your fever, your body can elevate the body temperature. Normal body temperature is about 98.6 degrees. Um, anywhere up to um, 100 degrees is actually still considered normal. Uh, but when you reach that 102 or 100, I'm sorry, 100.4 up to 102, that's called a low grade fever. An elevated body temperature is actually good for your body. Uh, when you have an infection, it helps to inhibit the growth of some bacteria that could be inside your body, or it helps to stimulate white blood cells, which are part of your immune response. Um, when you get to too high of a fever, if your body uh, temperature elevates to uh, you know, 104 or up to 107, that's actually quite dangerous. And that's when you would want to make sure that you're reducing that body temperature by taking fever reducing medicine or taking cool bath. Um, because if your body temperature gets too high, that's what's going to denature your cells enzymes, and then that can affect your own cell function. So that's a dangerous type of fever, but a small or a low grade fever um, is actually helpful in fighting off infection. Another type of non-specific response is the inflammatory response. I'm going to fast forward to the next slide here for the picture on the inflammatory response. So if you get like a pin poke uh, through your skin, if you poked yourself with a, a needle or a pin, um, there's potentially bad bacteria that are now, they've gone through your first line of defense, they've gone through your skin, and they're now in contact with some of the cells inside of your body. Those cells 
are starting to release a chemical signal called histamine. And so this chemical signal here released by these cells are starting to send a message out to the rest of the body. Again, this is a whole body response. And these chemical signals, again called histamine, are sending messages to our blood vessels. In your blood vessels, you have white blood cells that help to um, fight off infection. And so that histamine is sending a, a message to the white blood cells and the capillaries. And it tells your blood vessels to increase in size. It's called dilation. So those capillaries get bigger in size. And it also makes them a little bit more permeable. So some fluid can leave or exit the blood cells, the blood vessels, excuse me. And it goes up into that area where you have the intrusion um, bacteria. So our blood vessels get bigger and more permeable. We have these white blood cells, those are these yellow cells here. They're able to escape from our blood vessels. And then that fluid and extra blood cells causes this inflammation. So you can see it's starting to swell or cause inflammation. And then these white blood cells, these are called macrophages um, or phagocytes in this specific uh, picture, but they are white blood cells that basically engulf any kind of potentially harmful bacteria or pathogen that has entered the body. I'm going to go back to this one for a second. So we've covered fever, the inflammatory response, and then again, these white blood cells are macrophages. And in this picture here, you have another one, um, that little black dot uh, was bacteria. And this white blood cell is chasing after it, and it basically goes and engulfs it or tries to eat it up so that it can't cause harm to the rest of your body. So in the analogy, again, thinking about your body as um, uh, a castle that needs to be defended, this would be like your home security system, recognizing that something has broken through the barrier, releasing out that histamine, and then calling the first responders. And the first responders would be those macrophages that are coming to help um, get rid of any of those potential intruders. I went through this, and then the last part of our lesson today is to think about allergies. A lot of the symptoms that I just described with inflammation or fever, um, watery eyes, itchiness, this is all part of this, your immune system. It's your body's response to something in the environment. So you might have runny nose if you have allergies. You might have hives uh, where your skin gets kind of itchy and bumpy. Inflammation, um, sometimes people have uh, swelling in their throat if they consume something that might be, um, uh, that they're allergic to, or itchy eyes. So those are all of the symptoms of allergies, and these are all part of your second line of defense. Your body's immune system is trying to fight off what is otherwise a harmless substance, but your body is basically overreacting to these things, like pollen. Um, or a food protein that might be in peanuts or shellfish. Um, different pet danders can also uh, instigate this type of body's response. So that is our first and second line of defense and the connection to allergies and why we have the same types of symptoms um, for allergies as we do when we have uh, like a cold or um, even potentially influenza. All right.